Let's design this awesome 3D sliding carousel in Figma. This is probably not the UX you might be looking for, but this is an essential trick to learn and it will cover very important features in Figma. I have a surprise for you later in the video, but we will get to that later. Before we start, I request you guys to subscribe to my channel and like the video so I can improve the quality of my videos for you. Let's start. So first thing first, let me tell you where I got these assets, these fruits, these cans, these labels. Well, all of this can be found on a website called freepick.com. Uh, let me show you how. You go to freepick.com, as you can see, this is a melon, this is a melon on a white background. And let's say we want to search a can mockup. So let's search that and uh, filter through the ones you like. Uh, let's switch on a filter for free. Yeah, so these these have premium and free. So let's say I, I, I like this one. So I can either download the PSD and remove the, the background, but it's a one background image, a plain background. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's go to my Figma file and paste it over here and run the plugin, which is Icons 8 Background Remover plugin. Uh, by the way, I made a video for such plugins, so make sure to watch that. Uh, you can search the plugin from here as well. Uh, so click the Remove Background button and it will remove the background and voila, the, the mockup is now transparent. Uh, but I already have a mockup, so let's delete this and let's use this one. Uh, for these labels, I got this uh, from Free Freepik as well. Uh, and let me show you in this Illustrator file, I got this file. Uh, I opened it up in Illustrator. Some of the fonts were missing. I downloaded those fonts and then it was working fine. Uh, and I converted them to outlines just like this. You can just click outlines and it will change the text to shapes so that when I copy this in Figma, so there's no missing font or anything else. So once you have the labels, uh, you can just select and group them together and copy them and paste them over here just like this. Now this is a frame, so let's just ungroup it and by Control Shift G and make it a group. So make sure that this is in a group. Uh, so I've already placed these three, so let's delete that one. Uh, I did the same for these fruit images. I copied them here and ran the plugin just from the plugin section right here. I can see it background remover and I have the transparent fruit. Now let's add a frame quickly. Let's name it one as this will be our first frame and add the mockup inside the frame. Uh, make sure that this is centered just like this and let's bring our labels over here. Uh, now. As you can see that these labels are probably too large for the mockup, but uh, the height is not as compared to the mockup. So let's add a background rectangle to it. You will know the reason for this background in just a second. So let's place it over here, make sure that this rectangle is more than the width of the can and more than the height of the can. Let's make it Go, make it go back in the layers and let's place it and give it a color. Uh, let's give it a darker green. Let's duplicate this once and let's duplicate it once more. Uh, let's give it a color for the second, second label, just like this. And actually let's choose a darker and for this one, let's choose a light pink, right? So and make sure that these labels are centered with this rectangle in the background. Perfect. Now let's just select all of these and make it into a component and name it labels. I'm just making it components so that I might have to change them later on. So let's bring a copy into the frame. I can't see the can. So from the layer section, I'm going to select the multiply selection. And as you can see, now we can see the can and the droplets of the can as well. Uh, let's scale it down to fit the size of can just like this. Uh, and now you can see why we added those rectangular backgrounds to cover the whole can. Yeah, so perfect. This, uh, this is looking nice. Let's uh, duplicate this can once. Uh, 
let's name it can and duplicate it and let's name it can2 and now select this label and this can2 and make it a mask just like this and now when you scroll through the labels not scroll just move the position of the labels it will look like that this is rotating it's time we add fruits to the frame so let's select the apple because this is an apple flavor so uh, I'm just gonna place it in the frame and let's duplicate it a bunch of times just like this and make these uh, you know of different sizes and different rotations and just make them random you know rotations and random positions and random scales uh, just like this so that it looks like that multiple slices of apple are falling I mean it's probably a good idea that you you get multiple images of apple and not just work with one of them uh, and to make it more realistic uh, you can give some layer glare to some of the uh, the foreground apples to give it more depth uh, and now once you're done just select all of these and group them together by command g and let's name it apples let's bring the group over here and duplicate it once because i want to add oranges and the watermelon at the same positions at almost same positions not exactly so let's just bring the orange slice in i'm gonna repeat the process so i'm gonna fast forward this part and once you're done with all of them just select them all together and make them into a frame uh, yeah frame selection just like this and let's bring this frame inside our first frame so let me just show you how so let's just place it over here and bring it into the position that we want now once it's in the position now you can also change the position of each fruit if you want uh, but I mean that looks nice to me uh, but now once once we have this frame let's rename this to fruits and now we can move the position to top to bring in oranges similarly you can change the position for each fruit accordingly to your frame just like this I'm gonna fast forward this The positioning is perfect so let's add some text over here in the center just like this make sure that uh, this text over here is outside this fruits frame because once you add the text it probably will land inside the fruit frame because it's lying on top let's add some ellipse over here for our slider and let's just give it a green color not this one yeah that that works and make them outside this frame as well this is a very important part so make sure you do that let's name it ellipse and let's close this over here right so we have the lips actually let's move the ellipse a bit down so it looks nice yeah and let's move move this apple away I should I think I should move this apple away it's way close to the slider so yeah that's fine all right so we have the frame ready now all we have to do is add some background to add the background we will just create a rectangle over here and let's just place it inside our frame and make it the size of our frame just like this and let's give it a green color so let's just pick our color and make it a light green color just like this and uh, we want to make this background dynamic for each frame so uh, let's just bring it outside let's just drag it outside the frame and let's just make another frame and just duplicate it one more time because we have three frames uh, let's just convert it auto layout so just it's easier for me 
uh, just select this one the second uh, rectangle over here and let's just give it a yellow color from this and the third one the pink color and make them both lighter colors uh, just like this the light pink yeah perfect now let's just make it a two component so that we can change them later on and once you're done let's just bring the background inside our frame paste it inside and just scroll it uh, change the position just move it around and set into the green background just like this and there is another way to do that uh, which is doing through uh, these alignment tools so if I just select uh, this background and make it align left right and center it will change the background all right so once we have the frame ready let's just duplicate this frame and change the stuff inside it so first thing is that we need to change uh, the the background i've center lined it so it's yellow now and now let's just scroll through this label to make it yellow just like this and let's just uh, scroll these fruits up not scroll just change the position i always say scroll i don't know why but uh, it's just changing the position so that we can see the, the orange and let's change this ellipse to something like orange and make it the second point and let's just duplicate it once more and do it one more time go to the next frame and let's align it to change the background change the labels drag it to change the position to watermelon flavor just like this yeah perfect and now let's just select our fruits and change the position drag them above to bring in the watermelons and that's it and let's change the ellipse to something like pink All right so we have the frames ready now let's add some interaction to it uh, let's just go to prototype and from the first frame drag to the second frame and select on drag and smart animate and select it custom busier and pull these points just like this so it's a smooth animation and change the time duration to 1000 milliseconds and from the second frame to the third frame again on drag and the settings will be the same so and from the third frame to the first frame to loop it and on drag and the same settings just like this and I think so we're done let's preview and see how it looks let's drag it perfect as you can see this is a very beautiful animation just like a 3d carousel and it looks amazing now I told you that I will be giving a surprise at the end of the video. So the surprise is that I will be giving away this file and some more Figma files for you guys for free to edit and use for commercial use. Or maybe you can add them to your portfolio or whatever. So the link will be in the description. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video because your appreciation means a lot. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.